clean walled beams are uh, uh, cylindrical uh, bodies with uh, basically two um, uh, smallness parameters. The first is the uh, diameter of the cross section, which is uh, small with respect to the length of the beam of the cylinder, and the second is a, a, a smaller uh, in the thickness of the walls, uh, which is uh, uh, small with respect to the diameter of the cross section. This kind of uh, 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 beam structural elements uh, are uh, often used in, in uh, engineering because of uh, their uh, high, uh, high efficiency, structural efficiency. They have uh, good performances with low uh, uh, weight. And, uh, but uh, on the other hand, they present a rather uh, uh, anomalous behavior with respect to uh, the uh, behavior of beams that is uh, uh, described in uh, the Saint Benant uh, theory of beams. And I'll, what happens here? Oh, I don't know. And I'll uh, uh, summarize some of this uh, strange behavior. Uh, take, say, a, <coughs> a beam with a Z, a Z, a Z a cross section uh, pulled uh, at the ends uh, on the web of the, of the cross section. And because of uh, the uh, uh, The transfer of the load to the um, flanges of uh, uh, the cross section, uh, these uh, uh, tend to bend in, uh, in addition to extend. And this uh, make, uh, uh, if, uh, make the, the wool cross section to rotate with respect. So, this is uh, an effect which is uh, uh, quite unusual in. Uh, uh, for uh, uh, standard uh, beams. Another is uh, this one. Is a, a, a beam clamped at one end and uh, uh, under, um, on which a couple of uh, uh, loads uh, opposite loads uh, act at the, uh, at the free end. And then uh, uh, this is uh, a kind of uh, loading device which corresponds to, uh, say, the torsion case in the Saint Benant uh, theory. And uh, one would expect, say, a, a solution where there is no uh, uh, third component of uh, the stress uh, tensor, P33. And uh, which is not so, because uh, if one disregard uh, for a while uh, the presence of the web connecting the two flanges, the flanges are uh, undergo uh, um, a flexure load. So they deflect in, in, in opposite direction, and this also make the uh, beam to rotate and. Uh, and the other one, the other case is this, for instance. This kind of uh, loading device is statically equivalent to zero. So nothing would be as expected in the seminar theory. But uh, again, if one disregards for, a, mo for uh, a moment, the presence of the web uh, connecting the two flanges, the two flanges inflect, and again, the uh, the beam tends to rotate. And uh, uh, facts of this kind were known to the engineers uh, just also already at the beginning of the 19th century, of the 20th century. <coughs> and uh, in fact, uh, uh, Prandt and uh, uh, Timoshenko studied uh, some uh, problems connected with this uh, kind of behaviors. And, but the model uh, was provided by Vlasov in the late 40s. 
and uh, the, the work of Blasov, as is known, uh, became uh, known in the Western countries uh, uh, at the end of the 50s, when uh, his uh, book was translated in French first. And Blasov theory, Blasov model, is based on uh, uh, essentially on three assumptions, which uh, in a sense anticipate the kind of solutions that one expects. The first assumption is uh, an assumption on the, on, uh, the deformation of the, of the, of the, of the beam. Uh, the, uh, U is the displacement field, and it Im imagine it to assume to be the sum of two distinct components. The first one is the flexural displacement field, uh, consisting of uh, a translation, A or Z, of the cross section, and a rotation around an axis lay, laying uh, to the plane of the, of the cross section. Uh, so this is a displacement field of Navier type. And the second contribution is of a torsional type, which is there is a rotation of the uh, section uh, around uh, the center of mass uh, and uh, of the cross section and uh, a, a, a warping of it, described in this way. And the difference with respect to a classical, uh, the seven hour theory is that uh, the um, uh, torsion for unit uh, uh, length is not uh, uh, constant, but depends on, on a Z. And uh, a second assumption is uh, uh, concern regard the uh, um, uh, shear stresses, which is, uh, are also uh, imagined to be the sum of a uh, shear stress a la December, no? which is, uh, uh, comes from a, 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 a torsion problem. And uh, this uh, shear stress is uh, uh, connected what, uh, with what is called primary torsion. And there is a second part of the, of the, of the shear stress which comes from flexural and secondary uh, torsion. The third assumption is uh, that uh, the tau rho is orthogonal uh, with respect to the shear strain associated with primary torsion. And uh, with these uh, three assumptions, one arrives uh, to uh, equilibrium equations, which appears to be five. And so there are three, uh, mm, uh, three mm, uh, couple uh, ordinary differential equations of the fourth order. And they are, are coupled through this uh, coefficient here. I gamma, I gamma psi, I psi, uh, I note are uh, uh, um, are uh, uh, geometric moments of the cross section, and the E and G are the Young and the shear modulo, moduli. And uh, then, uh, uh, for instance, this coupling, this coupling here, makes that uh, um, uh, implies that if one uh, um, loads the, the a beam of this type with the load at uh, one end, uh, a, a flexure is present and a rotation of the cross section is also present. This is when uh, the equations are uh, coupled uh, through uh, the uh, moment I sub gamma psi, psi uh, but uh, this is also, uh, there is also difference with the respect to the ordinary theory, if one uh, uh, consider a case where there is no coupling, because uh, the uh, equation which uh, uh, rules the uh, torsional uh, angle is of the fourth order instead of uh, the second order. And uh, this means that uh, one has uh, uh, the solution of, it, of this equation uh, of this problem uh, looks like uh, uh, in, in, in the formulas uh, written here. And in fact, if uh, one say, 
compare, say, the, uh, this is a, a term which corresponds to the uh, same venan solution. So one see here that uh, the beam uh, and, uh, for this model is uh, uh, stiffer than, uh, than uh, the, uh, the beam described by the saint uh, uh, model, but also say the uh, uh, torsion, uh, the couple, the torsional couple is uh, um, um, absorbed in uh, partially as a primary uh, torsion and partially as secondary torsion. The secondary torsion is associated with the, the uh, T sub 3, 3 components of, of the, of the of the stress tensor. Okay, in fact, uh, uh, models for uh, thin wall beam uh, have been uh, uh, refined uh, in uh, various ways, and uh, as is uh, uh, said by this author, there is no lack of composite beam theories, but quite the, to the contrary, there might be too many of them. And uh, so, uh, what, uh, uh, what's the problem that uh, uh, with uh, Roberto Paroni and uh, uh, Lorenzo Freddi uh, have uh, uh, studied is uh, mainly the following one. In the, there is a, a beam with the cross section done in this way, and uh, this, uh, the thickness is smaller than the diameter of the cross section, much smaller than uh, the length. And uh, the, uh, we have studied the linear case with uh, a strain energy, a, a total energy described by a functional, a, a functional of this type with uh, C, a, a, um, the elasticity uh, tensor, which may depend in, uh, uh, on, uh, on uh, the point in the, in the cross section and the whose uh, uh, symmetry group uh, at, uh, at se at several points may be different. So in this sense, uh, composite, we, we, we can uh, speak of composite uh, beam, uh, wall beam models. And uh, so we, we consider an isotropic, inhomogeneous uh, material. And uh, the um, goal is to go from 3D linear elasticity to 1D uh, theories of beams. And uh, this is uh, done, uh, has been done uh, in, uh, may be done in different ways, in various ways. The classical approach is the one that we have seen uh, with Vlasov, make an zats on, on, the, on the solution and explore consequences of this. And uh, although uh, it's uh, a quite uh, brilliant approach, and, uh, and uh, modeling, uh, the modeling of Blasov, it uh, uh, leaves uh, some uh, uh, unsatisfaction because uh, one uh, don't, does not know the range of validity of, uh, of the model and uh, also the assumptions are not all clear and, uh, and it is not clear that uh, they may be in conflict with one another. And uh, another uh, way is uh, um, using a formal approach uh, via asymptotic expansion and uh, match the coefficients, uh, like, say, Cierlet, Destulier, uh, did in 1979, <coughs> and then uh, Sanchez Valencia uh, for uh, uh, treating a problem with uh, this approach. And uh, what we have followed is the so called variational approach which is a rigorous and that's free, uh, although, say, uh, the basic assumption is that one uh, regards the problem as uh, uh, the epsilon problem as a problem in a sequence of problems, of a sequence of problems where epsilon goes to zero. So the, 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 uh, this is uh, the tacit uh, uh, assumption. And uh, uh, let the energy, the, the form of the energy decide. Uh, in fact, uh, in uh, this, uh, let me say, 
uh, recall uh, briefly in one page what the variational convergence is. Uh, one uh, consider the case of, of a sequence of functionals defined in some topological vector space X and uh, a functional F0, F0, defined in another topological vector space Y and uh, consider uh, the case where uh, what, uh, assume that uh, uh, we are interested in uh, uh, the minimizer of, uh, of these functionals and uh, assume that uh, uh, we uh, are in a condition where uh, sorry uh, in a condition where a u uh, epsilon uh, sub min uh, converge to something we say that f0 tau gamma uh, is the tau gamma limit of f epsilon if say and only if uh, one has uh, this uh, uh, um, property that u epsilon min and min sub min converge to v in some uh, suitable sense and uh, uh, when this happens uh, then f v is the minimizer of f zero over y and uh, the uh, minimum of f naught is the limit of the minimum of the f hat epsilon I mean is uh, missing there. Of course, uh, one uh, uh, has the problem to uh, uh, establish when uh, f, a, a, a function f naught is the gamma limit of uh, a sequence of f epsilon. And fortunately, uh, when uh, say uh, for instance, the f of sub epsilon, f hat sub epsilon, are uniformly um, coercive. There is a sequential characterization of gamma convergence, uh, which uh, says that uh, f zero is the gamma limit of f uh, hat uh, sub epsilon if and only if uh, two type of inequalities are satisfied. The first is uh, written here for any v. Uh, there is a sequence of u epsilon converging to v in uh, the topology tau such that f naught v is less or equal to the limit of f at uh, sub epsilon evaluated at u epsilon. And this is uh, the first uh, condition. And the second is that uh, for uh, the requirement that for any v in y there is a sequence converging to v such that the uh, a reverse inequality uh, more or less uh, is valid. So F0 of V is uh, greater or low uh, or, or equal to the limb soup of F hat of, uh, of U epsilon. Uh, well, this is the way uh, followed by several authors, starting from uh, uh, Freddy, Morassi, and Paroni in two papers in the Journal of Elasticity, which concern uh, the, the model of thin walled beams in linear elasticity for the homogeneous isotropic case and Freddy Murai Paroni in 2008 in uh, uh, again Siam uh, Journal of Mathematical Analysis uh, dealing with rectangular cross section the uh, non homogeneous and uh, isotropic and uh, then uh, thin walled beams in non linear elasticity have been considered again by Freddy, Mora, and Paroni in two recent papers, and they, they uh, treat the case of homogeneous isotropic uh, material. And uh, then uh, in a very fine paper by Davoli, which consider, say, uh, a curvilinear cross-section in uh, homogeneous, and uh, discuss the gamma convergence, but with respect to the gamma, uh, the convergence in terms of strain rather than in, in terms of uh, uh, displacement. And uh, so what uh, we uh, have uh, done in this paper is to discuss gamma convergence with in terms of displacement. And uh, basically the problem is this, we have uh, considered two cases, the open, an open cross section and the closed cross-section uh, of a uh, uh, thin wall. Uh, and uh, 
uh, constructed in this way, uh, there is a, a middle line, L, which is described by, uh, which is a plain simple curve with x1, the arc length, taking value in an interval in a set E uh, con uh, contained in, uh, in R. And uh, we have uh, uh, the two cases correspond to the uh, fact, uh, to the choice of E, the, uh, an open interval, 0L, or a torus, 0L, with the, the identification of the first uh, uh, of the, of the, the, the endpoints of, of the line, of the middle line. And <coughs> the, as to the regularity, uh, we assume uh, that uh, the middle line, the, this uh, simple curve is W3 infinity, and for most of, of, of the uh, paper, uh, W2 uh, comma, uh, comma infinity is enough, and probably that is uh, the right uh, choice for uh, the regularity of the uh, middle line. So introduce T, the tangent, the unit tangent to gamma, and N, the, the unit normal. Then we have that uh, the cross section described by this set and uh, capital omega hat epsilon is then uh, the Cartesian product of omega hat epsilon. And uh, uh, let us, uh, this uh, representation allows us to uh, naturally to uh, describe uh, the, uh, the beam on a fixed domain in this way. Now, uh, with, uh, let us consider beams clamped at one end and uh, under mole displacements. And uh, we wish to write the problem in a, on a fixed domain, and for this reason, we introduce this notation, which is the composition of U hat, the, 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 the displacement field described on the physical uh, domain, composed with the chi epsilon, which uh, uh, goes from omega to omega hat epsilon. <coughs> then uh, this is uh, x1, x2, x3 are a, a curvilinear system of coordinates for the physical uh, domain, and the gradient of u hat can be written in this way, where these are the duals of the um, coordinate uh, um, vectors associated to, this, uh, to the system of, of uh, um, coordinate. Or also, one can uh, rescale this, uh, this term suitably, factorizing epsilon as far as G1 epsilon is concerned, a one over delta epsilon as far as uh, G2 is concerned, and, <coughs> and right then uh, uh, the, the gradient of your hat in this form, which is, will be denoted in this way. And uh, this is uh, the, the uh, gradient of the uh, U hat described on uh, the fixed domain omega. And uh, G1 and G2 and G3 uh, look like that. Now, the, the linear measure of strain are uh, given by this formula, and uh, the energy functional, which is uh, this, uh, is, uh, is this. We uh, disregard for the moment uh, uh, this term, which is uh, connected with the potential of the loads, which will be, uh, if one makes, say, suitable assumptions, then there is uh, some uh, bounds for the, for the strain. Uh, uh, field, uh, in, uh, and uh, write down, say, rescaled energy functional, which is defined here, and takes on this form. Then uh, we consider sequences of uh, uh, functions in H1, which vanish at, uh, at one end of the, of the of the, um, of the beam, and uh, uh, such that uh, this uh, uh, ratio is uh, uh, bounded. And uh, uh, the two cases that I have uh, 
spoke about at the beginning, the closed cross-section and the open cross-section have a, a large overlapping, but the, for the closed cross-section, uh, one has to consider more constraints to take account of. So let us uh, concentrate for the moment on the uh, open, non-stride cross-section. And what can be tr uh, proved is a compactness theory, which is, says that uh, essentially the gradient, the, there is, uh, uh, for uh, each epsilon, there is a, a rotation field, depending on x1 and x3 only, uh, and uh, such that uh, uh, the, uh, the gradient of u epsilon uh, uh, differ from w epsilon in normal to less than t delta epsilon, and then uh, can be proved also an inequality of this type and of this type, which says that uh, w epsilon is in fact uh, uh, bounded in uh, equibounded in, in in H1. The theorem is rather laborious but essentially uh, follows the line of reasonings uh, by now um, well known um, and uh, established by uh, Anzelotti, Baldo, Percivale, Korn, Fogerius, and uh, uh, James and, uh, and Muller in the nonlinear case. One has to apply, say, Korn inequality by first, say, uh, splitting the domain in uh, small cubes and apply corn uh, inequality there, uh, showing that uh, this may be done uh, with the constant which do not depend on the, on, on the size of the, of the cubes, then uh, to show that this uh, uh, piecewise constant uh, uh, the, um, uh, rotations can be smoothed in a, in a continuous field and this inequality uh, are uh, guaranteed at the end. I mean, it's laborious, but I mean, it's, uh, there is uh, nothing new. And uh, there are corollaries coming out from this uh, compact theorem. And uh, the first, of course, is that W epsilon is weakly convergent in converging in H1 to some W. And this W has a very special form because it uh, has just the uh, uh, describe, say, a, a rotation around, around the E3 axis mm? with uh, theta, a function of X3 only, uh, of class H1. And then U epsilon converge weakly in H1 to U, but U is zero, identically. And this is not true for straight uh, cross-section. But uh, we are in, in the following case. And also that uh, this rescale derivative of W epsilon, uh, E3, the, the, the component of W epsilon uh, in the direction of E3, is uh, given by an expression of this kind. Well, <coughs> the <coughs> so the displacement U epsilon <coughs> is uh, uh, converge to zero, so does not say nothing interesting to us. But if one rescales suitably the components of U epsilon, then can construct a, 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 a sequence of functions that converge and, and uh, uh, define and arrive to the uh, uh, define a suitable uh, topology in which one may uh, understand the expression u epsilon 10 to. Uh, the rescaling is the following. For what uh, concern uh, the, the in-plane component of the displacement, one has to uh, rescale according to delta epsilon over epsilon. And as to the third component of U3, one has to rescale at delta epsilon. Right. <clears throat> uh, and one finds that there are three cases that uh, should be studied. And the first is then, uh, and the, the, these cases are classified 
in terms of uh, this ratio, which is a ratio uh, describing, say, the fatness or the thickness of, 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 of the wall. Uh, this, the first, uh, the case in, in which this ratio, the limit of this ratio is zero, describes, say, moderate thin uh, beams, in the sense that the epsilon goes to zero, uh, not faster than epsilon square. Right. The second case is uh, uh, the case, the canonical case, that, that we call it thin, and the third case is ultra thin. So uh, uh, the, the, the um, uh, thickness goes to zero very fast. And uh, uh, this is the case that uh, we have not been able so far to treat, but probably it, it can't uh, be treated in, uh, in uh, having in mind the behavior of uh, beam type. Maybe something more, more complicated, like uh, uh, the case of a, a, a very thin membrane that uh, composes, say, the, 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 the wall of the, of the beam. So this is probably uh, something that <coughs> needs uh, uh, um, more smart ideas than uh, we had uh, so far. And for S, uh, taking values in uh, 0, 1, uh, in the set 0 and 1, uh, can prove that uh, the in-plane component of V epsilon uh, converge in each one to some uh, V, and uh, the third component of the epsilon converge weakly in H1 to some V3. With uh, this limit V and V3, which have a very special uh, aspect, a very special form. Uh, the first describes, say, a translation of the cross-section and the rotation around, uh, say, uh, the uh, center of mass of the middle line, uh, sorry, the rotation and the translation of the section. And the third one is uh, described, say, the component in uh, the direction of the X3. And uh, this is made uh, on, uh, of uh, a, um, a component constant on the section, a component which uh, comes from uh, uh, the the bending of the section, and uh, which is, uh, uh, this is the derivative with respect to x3 of m, m, m bar. And this is a term which uh, is, has the form of the, given by the sectorial, uh, the, the theory of uh, sectorial areas of, uh, in Vlasov theory. Right. Gamma minus gamma g uh, dot n in the x1 is uh, describe what is called the sectorial area, uh, the area uh, spanned by a, a radius which points uh, uh, from uh, the uh, from uh, the center of mass, the running point along along uh, along uh, the middle. One uh, can uh, give uh, a, a different form for. Uh, uh, the last, uh, this last formula, which is more easily, uh, uh, let me say that the, uh, this uh, m bar is the average on the cross section of, of the v epsilon bar. So this is uh, the, the, the average uh, displacement, uh, transversal displacement. And, uh, uh, one may introduce a special point called uh, shear, uh, shear center and can write V3 in a different form, which is this. And uh, I, I, I don't want to uh, go into the details here, uh, but uh, uh, one may write V3 in this form where X, C3 here is the average of V3 and uh, this is uh, the uh, um, described, say, uh, this should be a, a, a dot. Uh, ah, no, the, no, 
this is described, say, a translation, a rotation around the, 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 the shear of the uh, center of the, of the cross section. And, uh, and this is uh, what is called the warping function, described with respect to uh, the um, sectorial areas seen from uh, the uh, shear center. This is exactly the form of Vlad of uh, uh, model for uh, the displacement V3. And uh, further properties of the limits uh, come out, which are M3 is uh, in fact uh, in, a, in H1 uh, and uh, vanish at uh, zero, M bar is H2 in fact and vanish with the derivative with respect to X3 in, in zero and <coughs> theta which uh, we knew that there was H1 is in fact H2 if we are in the case of the thin uh, uh, beams and uh, satisfies conditions of this type. I, uh, I'll come back to this, uh, to this uh, slides uh, later if, uh, uh, and uh, go. There is uh, also uh, a characterization of the limit space. The limit uh, displacement and, uh, but uh, one can say also something about the limit of the strains. Of course, the strains, the, uh, since uh, uh, these quantities are uh, bounded in L2, there is some E, uh, which is the weak limit in L2 of these quantities. So, the, say, a, a, a limit strain. And, uh, but uh, some of the components of E can be given a, a, a specific characterization. In particular, E33, E33 is the derivative with respect to X3 of V3, as expected. E13 has this form, and E11 has this form, where eta2, eta3, and eta1 are three functions, L2 functions, we don't know uh, any uh, anything more than that at, at this point. And, uh, but we, uh, we know that uh, they depend just on x1 and x3. The elastic strain energy of the three-dimensional problem is this. There is a term that is uh, called uh, in the, what follows f, depending on x, because uh, c depends on x and depending on the uh, strain measure E. And uh, the limit problem we are looking for is, uh, can be uh, shown to, uh, to have a form of this type. There is a function f double note here, uh, which depends on x and on this uh, third derivative of theta uh, derivative with respect to x3 of theta and v3 only. And uh, we show that uh, uh, f uh, double note uh, can be uh, defined in uh, such a way that this is uh, the uh, gamma limit of, uh, uh, of the functional uh, we are looking for, we, we, we started from suitably scale. So how is uh, f not not done? First of all, we know that uh, E11, E13, E33 have uh, a specific form. So let us uh, write uh, f of x e in this uh, in this form. And uh, the first step is uh, we deny to uh, the limit inequality that uh, rules uh, the uh, gamma convergence characterization, uh, one uh, may say minimize this f with respect to these components of the strain for uh, E11, E13, E33 uh, fixed. And uh, this is uh, a quadratic function uh, which is uh, positive definite 
strictly positive, definite, and so from uh, this minimization one gets uh, expression, ex explicit expressions uh, for A sub IJ in, uh, in terms of E11, E13, and E33, and uh, define in this way uh, a, a function F node. And then uh, one, uh, once uh, one has F node, uh, one can uh, op uh, get the optimal uh, functions uh, E1, E2, E3, uh, to minimize further, to m make uh, further lower the, the um, strain energy. And uh, so one uh, studied this variational problem, which is uh, essentially an algebraic problem, because E1, E2, and E3 compare without derivatives in, in this uh, integral, and uh, uh, get back uh, E1 uh, optimal, uh, E2 optimal, E3 optimal. And then uh, F double node can be written in this way. It is defined this way. And uh, characterization of F node is this. As I said, uh, uh, the substitution of uh, the optimal AJ, A, A, IJ uh, in, in, in F. Uh, provides a, a quadratic function uh, of uh, this triplet of, of uh, strain measure. And these are, say, <coughs> uh, effective uh, el elasticity moduli with respect to E11, E13, E133. And uh, as far for F note, double note, one obtains, say, start from here, uh, make the minimization of the integral, and obtains expression of this type, where these uh, square brackets here, the um, uh, wedge, say, uh, denote the, the integral of C11 and C12 uh, in, uh, uh, in the thickness of the wall. So give a, a kind of average uh, uh, moduli in, in the thickness. And uh, this is uh, a, a matrix that uh, is invertible. So uh, one can calculate E1, E2, E3 optimals uh, uh, explicitly from here. And they depend linearly from uh, this uh, uh, quantity and uh, arrive at uh, F uh, double node, which takes uh, the quadratic uh, function uh, given in this, uh, where uh, this uh, uh, elasticity uh, constants depend on X, of course. Here again, uh, one may, may, may be uh, more explicit and arrive, say, at an expression of uh, uh, the energy which is, uh, which is of, this, uh, of this type. Uh, when uh, integrates over the cross section. And uh, these are coefficients that are explicitly given by formulas and one recognizes say, um, um, moments, uh, uh, geometrical moments associated with, uh, with, uh, with the cross-section of the uh, theory of, of plasma. Okay. The limit problem is uh, the following. Let us now say this is uh, the function, the strain energy uh, functional uh, we started with, uh, represented on a fixed domain. And uh, uh, let us define with the uh, capital, uh, script capital A uh, sub S, uh, the, uh, fa the um, uh, function of the pairs of, uh, the collection of the pair of functions in uh, these two uh, spaces respectively, for which the uh, representation we have uh, uh, found uh, uh, during the analysis uh, holds. 
So a couple a pairs of B and theta for which exist M bar, M3, and theta, such that V is done in this way. Uh, v, uh, v bar if I, uh, has this form, and V3 has uh, this form. And uh, of course, we say that U epsilon tend to V theta if uh, it happens that uh, the V epsilon suitably rescaled, and uh, this is uh, a bar I'm, I'm is missing here, convert to V head, v, v, v bar, and V3 respectively. And uh, this quantity, which converts to uh, the, uh, uh, converts to the uh, function theta, which describes the, the solid rotation of the cross section at, at X3. And uh, the final theorem is the following. If we define, say, F note of V and theta like in this form, if the pair V theta belongs to a uh, sub S and uh, plus infinite outside, then F note is the gamma limit of one over delta epsilon square times F epsilon. And this is, uh, uh, there is here a recovery. Um, of course, we, we have to to show that uh, the two <coughs> uh, inequality, the Lemin and Lemin sup inequality hold true. Uh, the Lemin inequality is uh, obvious, is uh, trivial because uh, uh, of the way we construct the F node node. And uh, the <coughs> uh, recovery uh, sequence is uh, more delicate. And uh, we have uh, uh, done it. Uh, in a rather <coughs> peculiar way, in the sense that we did not construct uh, explicitly a recovery sequence, but we show that there is one, and we indicate how it can be uh, constructed. And so in a sense, it's, uh, I think, interesting to see this uh, part. And uh, let the V and theta be such that uh, uh, we, we imagine to have a V theta given and want to find a U epsilon such that, that uh, this uh, convergence is uh, satisfied and lin sup is least, less or equal to this quantity. And uh, uh, we uh, start from, say, V theta construct, say, the optimal strain associated to V theta, and uh, uh, define uh, phi note uh, for these uh, E-optimal uh, objects. And uh, then uh, we'll, uh, we study uh, a, a function of this type and uh, try to minimize with respect to U epsilon. Uh, with respect to you, and, uh, and uh, uh, prove that in fact a new of such a type exists, and is exactly the one which uh, comes from this pair, associated with this pair. First of all, uh, uh, this is uh, the minimum, uh, the minimizer is, uh, of uh, this function is uh, unique, and is characterized by uh, the stationarity condition that I've written here, and uh, when one uh, and psi is uh, is a test function that must be chosen here. Let us uh, choose psi as u epsilon, which is uh, uh, the minimizer. And uh, and uh, go ahead. One finds that uh, this expression is bounded by this, so we are via uh, coercivity, uh, u epsilon are such that the strain associated with them uh, uh, divided by delta epsilon is bounded in L2. And in particular, in particular then, uh, the u epsilon uh, tend to some pair v uh, tilde and theta tilde because uh, uh, with V tilde, theta tilde belong to the AES. Of course, the only uh, case interesting to, the, 
that remains to be proved in, uh, uh, for the recovery is uh, the case where the pair V and theta belong to, uh, belong to uh, AS, because otherwise uh, the functional uh, uh, takes the plus infinite value. So. And also, uh, it can be proved, taken suitably, uh, the test function that this uh, uh, quantity converts to object of this kind, where, sorry, uh, this converts to object of this kind, where E tilde, capital E tilde, is uh, the optimal E tilde associated with this pair. The second is that uh, this uh, E optimal, the second step is that this E optimal is in fact the E optimal associated with the V theta from uh, which we, were, we, were, uh, we started. And finally, that uh, theta tilde coincide with theta and V tilde coincide with V. So we have done, we are done. This is uh, so far for the open cross section. Let me conclude with uh, uh, major differences that uh, uh, are uh, connected with uh, the closed cross section. The first difference, uh, the first uh, 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 difference is that the script data which have uh, found before and uh, which uh, uh, applies also to uh, the uh, closed cross section is zero. It's in the, the, the role of uh, script theta is taken by another quantity that uh, is indicated with uh, a normal theta, which is uh, the convergent, the, the limit of uh, some rescaled average of the, of the uh, rotation of the cross section. And this uh, uh, average is made with respect to the sectorial area. Because this is the sectorial area, the element of the sectorial area. And, <clears throat> but if one wants to uh, see something different from zero, has to rescale further the rotation of the cross section. This means that, uh, in a practical term, that uh, means what uh, is known to engineers: cross sections much stiffer than than the open cross section, and this is uh, uh, the result. Says that also how uh, how much they are stiffer. Okay. You you have you have to rescale by one over delta epsilon uh, sub uh, re, uh, epsilon, and finally. Uh, <coughs> but uh, in, in the case of the closed cross section, the uh, functions E2 and E3 are no longer any functions in L2, but must satisfy some integral constraint. So one has to take into account this integral constraint in a calculated F node. And this is, can be done, and, but, in, but uh, one must uh, take a suitable account of uh, what uh, comes out from uh, the analysis there. And uh, this is uh, all uh, I wish to say. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh,